Hey, thanks for joining. You did it. Nice job. Introducing our speaker, author, and coach to thousands of professionals and organizations worldwide, including NASA, the U.S. Air Force, the Department of Transportation, the FBI. Your friend, Phil. Over to you, Phil. Thank you. It is indeed a pleasure to be talking to you today about interviews. The main purpose of today's session is to share with you my experience in going for over 40 different interviews. I woke up and smelt the coffee pretty early in my career because I remember one of the hiring managers telling me, you're not like those other guys that come in here. For that reason, I'm going to give you this special position. And this interviewer set me up for success by placing me in a well-known Fortune 500 bank. Everyone knows this bank. And that's where I cut my teeth on project management, records management, and a lot of corporate stuff. So I'll be sharing with you my experiences and my understanding of what actually gets you to stay in the door, not just to get in the door. It's one thing to get an interview and be hired in the company, but it's another thing to advance to levels above where you started and to stay in there. So I'm going to be sharing some of these communication tips, communication tricks, and overall observations that I've made through the years. You see, a lot of people believe that it's their resume that gets them into the door. But I'll tell you this, your resume may get you into the door, but it definitely won't keep you there. Your interview will be judged on several things other than your resume. Franklin Murphy, for example, chairman Times Mirror, he said, a resume is needed, but it won't get you the job. When I interview a job applicant, I am first interested in how he presents himself. How does he look? How is he dressed? What does he say? And how does he answer my questions? That is what qualifies you for several jobs. How you're able to communicate, how you're able to connect, the overall package, how you dress, how you look, and how you come across. Robert Half says, job applicants do not always act in their own best interest. And it's true. Some people walk into an interview not with their A-game. That is a big mistake. Go with your A-game. Look smart. Get ready to talk. Get ready to sell. An interview is nothing more but an opportunity to sell yourself and sell yourself with everything you've got. If you don't sell yourself with passion, it comes across as lackluster, dull, and uninterested. So you need to go again with your A game to all the iterations of an interview. Barbara Walters offers this advice to prospective interviewers. She says, my best advice for dealing with destructive anxiety, if you have it, is homework. Homework helps enormously when you apply for a job. you got to know your resume. you got to know your history. You should be able to pick any step in your timeline and explain it to the satisfaction of the interviewer. When you go for interviews, also balance communication with listening. You don't want to be over the top, a loose cannon, saying too much and being too familiar. The personnel manager took an application from a job seeker, but he had to tell him that he didn't have anything for him. Personnel manager says, right now, we just don't have enough to keep you busy. The applicant said, oh, you'd be surprised at how little it takes. <laughs> and you don't want to exaggerate your past. For example, a, a very eager beaver young man was applying for a job and the supervisor said, we need a responsible person. The young man said, well, sir, at all the jobs I had, whenever anything happened, they said I was responsible. <laughs> you want to watch what you say, all right? You want to position yourself for success. You want to make sure you're communicating exactly what you mean. You want to let your body language be congruent with what you're saying. To get hired, you may have to sell someone on the idea of how much they need you. Just like I said, you want to be selling yourself hard. And when I say hard, I'm not saying in your face, 
But passion goes beyond being loud. It goes beyond being brassy and in your face. Passion can be felt. It can be felt in the way you speak. It can be felt in your gestures. Compared to not speaking or communicating with any gesture or body language inflections at all, that would come across as very dispassionate. You see what I mean? Victor Kaim, well-known businessman, owner of the New England Patriots at the time, and owner of the Remington Company. He talked about a young man who wanted to work for him once upon a time, and after looking at this applicant's resume, he told him there wasn't anything available. The young man refused to end the interview. He said, "I think there's an opening for me, but I don't know where it is yet." <laughs> He offered Kaim a plan. He would work for thirty days without compensation, wagering his free labor that he'd find a position for himself at Remington. Within the thirty days, he found some problems and outlined how he would solve them. He got the job. Persistence can lead to a good job. There are many different flavors, many different ingredients that make you successful in your job search. Many different hallmarks and landmarks will make you successful in your overall search. I remember going into a firm, well-known semiconductor firm, looking for a job. I was interviewed, brought my A game, great interview, but the interviewer thought I just wasn't that great a fit because I needed to have more IT hardware background. Within a few months, this interviewer recommended me to his colleague, and at the end of the day, I was placed. In a program manager role in this firm, all because I came with my A game in a first interview that didn't lead to a job, but led to success in a second interview, which was more like a free pass because he sold me to this colleague of his like there was no tomorrow. Till today, I'm great friends with that hiring manager. So it shows that you need to go with your A game. You need to go with your communication abilities. You need to go with everything you've got to sell yourself to win that gig. So right off the bat, in many organizations these days, one of the things you will be judged on is your ability to communicate, because people know that the project manager spends seventy to ninety percent of the time communicating. What they're thinking is, can I put this person in front of my staff? Can I put this person in front of the company? Can I put this person in front of the board? And if the answer is no, it's going to be a resounding no at the end of the interview. You want your body language to exude confidence, not arrogance, but confidence. You want your language to be free from slang and jargon that people don't understand. And you also want your eye contact to be sincere, straight into the eyes, but not in an overbearing fashion, and know when to look away and when to look back, but don't have a penetrative stare. When people see your honesty and transparency, when you are sharing what's on your resume by looking into your eyes, they get the feeling that you are truly communicating truth and not made-up stuff. Another thing I've realized that gets you straight into the favor of people interviewing you is your ability to be real, to be natural, to be honest, to be open, to be human. So going into an interview, instead of rehearsing the small talk, you need to get to a point where you are free in communicating with other human beings. You might want to practice this. Anywhere locally, as you're standing in line waiting for coffee, make small talk with the people around you. You need to practice this before you get into the interview. And when you get to the interview, it's just like meeting someone else down the road, down the street, and communication flows easily. Some of the things people often write out for one to go into the interview thinking about should actually come naturally and normally. We're all human. We're all affected by the things around us: climate, the state of the country, political events. You know, so without getting overtly political, there are things that generate natural discussion. 
So in addition to all of these natural things around us, what about things you like to do? Maybe you like to swim, you like to cook. Those things, sports, which sports do you like? Which hobbies do you have? You see, when people see that there's more to you than just your resume, they gravitate towards you a little bit more. They can relate to you a little bit more on a human level. And that's how you want to come across in an interview. You want to be on that human level. You don't want to be a robot. You know, I can do this, I can do that. No, you also want to go with that human element. Okay. Now, go with your gut as well, because sometimes your gut instinct may tell you it's not a good idea to share this at this time with this individual. Go with your gut. I can't overstate the importance of going with your gut. It's that inborn instinct that we all have. But if you do feel comfortable sharing, oh, I just got done with a run, or I just got done uh, painting a picture or painting a house, or I just got done going for a swim or going for a hike, you find that people begin to gravitate towards you as a human being a little bit more. I've experienced it. I'm not saying every company is the same, but a number of companies I've interviewed with seem to have people that are just human like you, just human like me, trying to make conversation regarding life outside of the grind, if you get what I mean. And this is actually accentuated a little bit more during further levels or further stages of interviews. Yeah. So, one of the sayings that John Maxwell has, he says, connectors connect on common ground. Find common ground with these folks. You know, one of the things I typically do if I'm going for an interview, I want to know who's interviewing me. So I go through LinkedIn, do my best to find out these folks, their educational background, where they worked, some things to that effect. And sometimes this awareness and understanding helps me to be able to better position the conversation. It helps me know and understand what is near and what is dear to these folks' hearts. You know, it enables me to understand what they truly do for the organization and their potential outside of what they do in the job, if you get what I mean. So all of these add up to enabling you communicate freely naturally, going beyond just the resume, but truly being a likable person who is not afraid to let down their guard. So in the next interview you go for, don't cringe, but embrace non-job related banter. Embrace it. It's great. That's why we're human. And that's how people are able to see that you are a great fit for what you're applying for or not, you see. Jack Welch, in one of his books, talks about a young lady applying for a position in a massive juggernaut company. And as she's going into the interview, she loses her balance and she falls, basically. And the folks interviewing her are there and she gets up and says, and I'm Grace, the ballet teacher. And they don't even crack a smile. They don't even grin. And she thinks, what a boring lot these are this probably will not be a good fit for me. And at the end of the interview, days later, they call to give her the job, but she refuses to work there because she finds out it's not a great fit for the kind of person she is. So sometimes being yourself in an interview will help you very rapidly determine that that job is not for you. It's a two-way street. You're interviewing them as much as they're interviewing you. That's how it's meant to be. But beyond those abnormalities and inconsistencies, my two cents is if you're going for a job, you need to apply connecting principles to your interview. And I'm going to share with you five connecting principles from John C. Maxwell, his book, Everyone Communicates for You Connect. One, connecting increases your influence in every situation. You go into an interview, bam, you're able to connect just as a human being. It puts you levels above those who go in 
trying to connect on just a resume. Next, connecting is all about others. And that's why you need to do your research and your background work so that you live in the world of the people interviewing you. You need to know what is near and dear to their hearts and you need to know why they want you in the job and you need to keep connecting based on that fact. I am a fit for what you need. I can deliver. I can bring solutions to problems. Remember my example about Victor Kayim? Next, connecting goes beyond words. Talk is cheap, right? Connecting in a face-to-face -face situation, as evidenced by Professor Emeritus Albert Morabian at UCLA, words are just 7% of a face-to-face -face communication situation. Tone of voice, 38%. Body language, a whopping 55%. And that's why I say you need to go with your A game in body language. You need to be able to express yourself freely using nonverbal cues. And you also need to be aware of nonverbal cues so that what you're saying is not misconstrued, so that what you're saying is congruent with your body language. Next, connecting always requires energy. If you're going in for an interview, don't burn the midnight oil, only to get into the interview and be a lackluster candidate. Nothing winds people up quicker than someone sucking the energy out of their very essence, sucking the life out of the room. No, you want to be the energy bringer, the optimist not the negative personality, not the person who looks as though they are unhappy to be there. And last but not least, connecting is more skill than natural talent. Yes, yeah, some people are born with the ability to communicate, or should I say to talk a lot, but there's a difference between communicating, even a duck and bark, but connecting is beyond a lot of the talk. It's about getting to the heart. So connecting is more skill than natural talent. And if you practice, as I suggested a few minutes ago, you will see the results over time. Intentional, deliberate practice can work wonders in communicating and connecting. A friend of mine went to an interview and said, oh, I didn't get the job because they said they got some better answers. You see, a lot of times people are not interviewing you because of what's on your resume. They're interviewing you because they want further convincing that you can do what you are applying to do or that you will compliment them. So it becomes a thing of making that first impression, second impression, third impression, however many iterations of the interview are, you want to make all of them count. You want to be that unforgettable person as you go into the job. To be honest with you, a lot of the jobs I've gone for, I probably wasn't the best fit, but I needed the job. And I was able to meet people at the point of their need by presenting myself as someone who could fit what they were looking for. And I just worked myself into the position to fulfill what they were looking for, okay? That's what you want to be, okay? Because if you're talking about a position, your dream job, it wouldn't be the company. For many of you, it wouldn't be the company you're in right now, okay? You fit where you are because you make it work, but that doesn't mean it's your ultimate. So in going for a job, it's important that we put ourselves in a position of those interviewing us if you were interviewing yourself, would you give yourself the job? Did you come across as being a convincing person? Or did it look fake and insincere? And did you seem bored with the company of the people around you? And did you not have any stimulating thought or discussion to bring to the table? You see, whenever I go for an interview, I'm going with questions in my question bag to ask at the end of the interview. You know, these are things that show preparedness, that show interest, and that show they'll probably be able to get along with you in some way. Those are my tips for today, and I hope that helps someone who's got an interview coming up. 
Don't shy away from the chit chat. Be human. Put yourself in the position of the interviewer and go with your A game. I wish you all the best and bye for now.